John. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about 3D printing uh, slash additive manufacturing. I always prefer to use the term additive manufacturing because it's a bit more broad, actually. It uh, combines a lot of different things. We've seen some great use cases today already. I mean, Stephanie showed us what's already possible in the healthcare and medical space, which is truly game-changing. And uh, now, basically, I also want to give you a perspective on, uh, on what additive can do today and what it can do and should be able to do in the future. Well, now you've seen my professional career. I'm coming from more of an IT background, um, so I'm not an engineer. So I try to be, make it um, well, it's easy to follow, basically, on, uh, on what I want to explain to you in terms of additive manufacturing. Because the fun thing is, additive manufacturing is a rather new technology. You know, it's been uh, around for only th about 30 years, and compared to other technologies, it's really brand new. But still, it's being used in so many different cases already. Just uh, as an example, and, uh, on Monday, we flew from uh, Frankfurt to Bilbao. In aerospace, in some of them, about 1,000 parts are already printed and put onto the airplane. Tools are printed and then being used, basically, to manufacture airplanes. Then we got out of the airport and uh, rented a car. It's basically a similar thing. You, get, uh, you rent your car and you know, hey, probably this car has been prototyped using 3D printing, or some tools have been used to actually manufacture it easier, quicker, and, uh, and more efficient. And then we come to beautiful San Sebastian, and uh, you see a lot of bicycles, but also some electric scooters. With 3D printing, um, we can enable also small companies to manufacture these kind of devices, because we can basically, well, we enable small companies to also print just small batches, meaning just one part or two parts, while in the past you would have ordered hundreds or thousands of parts to make it cost efficient. Right now, basically, you can print one customized part, and we've seen it with uh, bioprinting, and uh, it's all customized. And also then, you see a lot of runners uh, also down at uh, Nice Beach, and uh, also in some shoes, some of these soles are already 3D printed. And that's a technology that's only 30 years old, and we're just at the beginning. So let's see if I can uh, bring the... Well, until we wait, basically, to give you a perspective on, uh, on what additive actually means, because we've heard about uh, 3D printing, and uh, I just want to give you a brief introduction what it actually is. Um, once we get the presentation, you will see some nice pictures, um, basically, on there. And um, they will explain basically what it is compared to additive manufacturing and subtractive manufacturing. Subtractive manufacturing, it's kind of the opposite of additive, meaning is uh, that out of a big piece of material, you carve something out. For example, you have a big rock, and basically you make a monument out of it, use your chisel and everything, and um, this is basically then subtractive manufacturing. Additive works a bit different, meaning that it builds up, usually from the bottom, layer by layer. And this, of course, enables a lot of, lot of different things. It's um, because it gives us greater design freedom, because actually if you want to make something out of a big rock, you know, hey, you can't really change the infill. It's a rock. You can't really, really do a structure in there and uh, you can't really produce lightweight parts, usually. And with additive, this becomes much, much easier. Um, but uh, in any case, let's talk a bit about additive. I'm, it might be a bit harder to follow if you don't see it on the slides, so I'll try to do my best to give it a better flow. Um, so basically, with additive manufacturing, there's, uh, of course, the possibility with uh, greater design freedom and um, and the possibility to then design things in a different way. Just as an example, one of our customers in the US is a drone manufacturer. You know, drones have become popular quite, uh, quite popular in the last, uh, you know, 10 years maybe or so. And especially in the beginning, the key is to produce easy and lightweight parts, but also kind of one-off parts. And uh, with additive, you can uh, basically produce wings in one, uh, in one go, basically, with different structures inside. 
You know that bees are using the, the honeycomb structure to build their hives, which is just an amazing thing that they already do because it is so, so um, very durable. And uh, this is something that we can also use in 3D printing, meaning that when you design a wing, for example, you've got the outside, which is very nice and smooth, and inside you can put a honeycomb structure to actually not have a solid infill, but very durable, but light infills. And that's what our customers are using. One more thing, basically, what they are doing is prototyping. Right now, we can already create models. We've seen, uh, Stephanie, you had some nice slides also, thank you. Um, so you've seen some nice examples also in terms of uh, prototypes, meaning that we can have colorful prototypes. We can, uh, we can emulate different um, materials, like leather, like wood which is being used, especially in the automotive industry, to actually design the new cockpits and also the cockpits of the future, basically. Because uh, it's not a manual process anymore. They design it, basically, 3D model it, and then they can actually print it. And then just a bit of polishing, you've got a nice, nice looking part. And I know Technica and Gorka, um, and John, of course, you have a lot of parts also in Technica. And um, if you're interested, have a look because it's, it's truly amazing, and you would have seen some amazing pictures, but uh, unfortunately not, I'm sorry. Um, so basically, that's what it's being used for today. But let's put it kind of in the Industry 4.0 context, because we've heard about Industry 4.0 yesterday, we've heard about um, and the human touch, we've heard about artificial intelligence, so what does it have to do, and how does additive manufacturing actually factor into that role? And uh, um, subtractive manufacturing, it's the rock, it's Petra and Jordan, just so you know. This is the wing with the honeycomb structure that I talked about. These are the realistic um, prototypes. It's a gear shift um, from a car manufacturer. And this one I'm going to skip for now, and then we'll talk about Industry 4.0. Meaning that uh, right now, to me, Industry 4.0, is, it's kind of a buzzword. Because it can mean a lot of different things. People are saying, hey, with uh, quality control already in the manufacturing process, with lean manufacturing, we're already at Industry 4.0. I would say, mm, not so much, because it's a part of it, definitely, but it's, uh, it's more also a cultural shift on how we manufacture things. And that goes across all industry. That can go from healthcare to aerospace to automotive to consumer products. And Industry 4.0 means that it's a combination of the cyber and the physical, meaning that if you have, for example, a machine that's... Uh, that can actually, that knows what to do next and can man know what kind of part is needed in the next step of the manufacturing process, that would be amazing. And this is something that is being worked on, basically. Right now, a colleague of mine is basically saying, and uh, that was quite interesting, he said, yeah, we've got some nice uh, 3D printers, but basically, they're pretty dumb. Meaning that uh, they kind of behave like a very obedient little child but a little dumb, because basically they do exactly what we tell them to do. Even though they could know maybe that, uh, for example, some materials and some geometries, they don't match, you can't print it. And uh, this is something, once we say industry for the dough and connect everything, additive manufacturing is one of the key things and one of the key drivers to actually enable the future. You see on the, on the right-hand side, that's from the Boston Consulting Group. And you've probably seen it probably around 10 years ago already, basically. The nine drivers of AM. You've seen a lot of things that uh, we talked about yesterday. Augmented reality, for example, big data. But also additive manufacturing. But one thing that all of these have in common, basically, is the move to digital. We are in a digital world already but also in manufacturing and then everything that we do, this move is happening. And uh, this is something that will be the next big leap, basically, um, in this industry. So what it could enable, basically, and um, you see it here, 
With additive manufacturing and connected machines, we could even streamline the supply chain and manufacture where you need it. Meaning right now we have a lot of the manufacturing sites are centralized manufacturing sites. There's one site, this car is being produced, for example, in Brazil, in Spain, in Germany, in the UK. But what if, basically, all machines were connected and basically, with additive manufacturing, it becomes more easy to actually produce wherever you need the part. And then if you were saying, hey, my machine is smart, it knows exactly what part is needed in the next step. So then this would mean that uh, this machine can produce the part without us as humans even telling them, the machines, to produce the part. And then it all becomes connected. And this could change and revolutionize, actually, manufacturing, but also logistics, of course. Because then uh, we wouldn't need to ship all the different parts all over the globe like we do today. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting to see, when it all connects, how this could uh, uh, impact the world, actually. But of course, we've also, coming down to a more realistic uh, time frame, we also looked at, okay, what is actually needed today to drive the adoption of additive manufacturing? And there is a couple of things that uh, we came up with. We have had different studies, we've asked customers, we've been collaborating with uh, different uh, educational institutes, and basically we came up with uh, four suggestions to drive the adoption of additive manufacturing. The first one is model-based design. Model-based design is uh, very easily said a communication framework. When you design a part, basically, the part knows what it's supposed to do, basically, and it's all basically documented in a common framework. So you can use it universally. The second part is process simulation and virtual printing, meaning that before you actually manufacture a part, you can simulate the different manufacturing methods. It doesn't have to be only additive, could be any other method as well. And then basically define from this simulation and uh, the virtual printing on which uh, traditional method or additive method would be the best. And thirdly, we're going to talk about the software workflow. Right now, it's not quite uh, click print and you get a result. There's still some small steps that you need to take and it's uh, getting easier every year. I started with additive five years ago and uh, it's already improved by a great, great deal. A lot of uh, 3D CAD uh, software vendors are integrating 3D printing functionality as well into their software, so they can send it directly to the printer software. So this is something which is really technical and already happening. There's people actually um, thinking about these three things. But more importantly, and this is something that we heard yesterday as well, is the human touch. Meaning that uh, one of the suggestions that we have, what we need to change, is actually the designer's mind and skill set. Right now, when designers or um, design engineers are being educated, a lot of them are using the traditional methods and they're using more the, I would say, the traditional framework of designing things. But you've seen the parts that we are already creating. And uh, this means that uh, actually, you can create almost anything that you like. You can, I always say, if you can imagine it, you can print it. So basically, the designer doesn't need to think, hey, I need to design a part which is then going to be injected mold, injection molded, but uh, basically, he wants to design a part and then decide on how it's getting manufactured. And this is a huge, huge opportunity, but also a huge, huge challenge because it goes so, to so many different fields, basically. And uh, we do see that uh, some of the guys, like Technica, for example, they're adopting this. And I'm, I'm very happy to see so many teachers here as well because you're doing it every day, basically. You enable the young and the bright future, and uh, basically, this is great. So we've also asked some companies, um, mainly in the US, what would be their ideal candidate for additive manufacturing? 
And so to no surprise, they were saying, I want one person that knows pretty much everything. They want to know, have someone that knows about the additive technologies and the materials. They want to know about design for additive, and that's what I mentioned also with designer's mind and skill set, someone who knows how to design for it. They want to know the traditional manufacturing processes, but also economics, because obviously the cost per part is also, it's a lot, lot different when I injection mold something or if I 3D print something. It's a very different, uh, different mathematics and uh, you have to take here. So economics is also a key factor. But one of the things that all of them mentioned was that they want a person that is actually creative, that can think outside of the box and uh, can really unleash the true potential of additive in thinking and questioning how things are being made today. And uh, this is something where I think especially the VAT system comes in because um, we've also got some ideas on how to help that. And one of the things that we do see and, uh, is first the integration of additive manufacturing into existing learning paths. In most of the cases, it's already kind of part of, and I think this should be even further integrated into existing curricula so people know about 3D printing and know a bit more about the details of 3D printing. But secondly, and that's the, the key, I think, is we suggest to have a lot of hands-on workshops. I just remember when, when I, for the first time, was working with a 3D printer, and I'm, I'm no engineer and I don't design, and so, so I basically used Google SketchUp to kind of design a little thing, and uh, then I said, okay, let's just send it to the printer and see how it works, actually. It is so amazing that you design it on the screen and you think, wow, this looks good, let's print it, and then you hold it in your hand and you're like, oh, wow. I could improve this, I could improve this, this one could be different, because it actually, I think it enables different portion of your brain as well if you have something in your hand and you don't only see it on the screen, because then it's truly 3D, basically. To enable that, um, of course, it's important to also give students the possibility to print, meaning that uh, innovation centers on uh, campuses or in schools are extremely important obviously, to give them the ability to print. And one of the things that we as strategists also drive is, uh, is partnerships. So we are saying, hey, schools, universities, uh, vet systems, let's try to collaborate all together because in the end, education is the key to unleash the true potential. And so uh, what we are doing, and that's uh, me and my team basically, we are working with Technica closely together and um, to understand and enable them to enable you as teachers, basically, to bring additive into the different classrooms. So uh, I think that's really important. That's, and we've heard about, a lot about collaboration yesterday. It does not only mean collaboration between different governmental systems, but also between the industry and educational institutions, and of course, the government as well. Not sure what happened for now. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> We've got time, John, right? <laughs> now I got one more slide, which is basically the conclusion, because I, I want to uh, give you three things to take home, home with you. The first thing is the possibilities with additive manufacturing are limitless. There's so much we can do already today, and there's going to be so much more that we will be able to do in 5, 10, 20 years. Additive manufacturing is also an essential element of Industry 4.0. It's a new manufacturing method. And education is key to enable the true potential. So basically, all of us need to work together to also educate newcomers, but also existing companies on the use of additive manufacturing. That could be in curricula, it could be through workshops. There is different possibility, but let's talk. So um, thank you very much, John, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you for having me here.